Happy Sunday, everyone. I hope you are safe and healthy and happy. And uh, thank you for the great response to 12 alternatives, anti-anxiety medications that really work. And so today I'm gonna do antidepressants. And antidepressants, I've prescribed for a very long time. And it used to be thought that depression was basically a serotonin deficiency. And in 1987, 1988, when Prozac came, it was like, hallelujah, um, depression is going to go away. But it didn't. Depression since 1987 has gone up 400% in the United States. And suicide since 1999 has increased 33%. And it's increasing faster among teenagers than ever before. And so I think we have to get so much smarter and see depression as a symptom with many different causes rather than a deficiency of neurotransmitters that we can fix with a pill. And the pharmaceutical companies are not in the order business. They're in the reorder business. That when it came to psychiatry, there were significant discussions about what can we produce that keeps people on our medication for a very long time. And I'm not okay with that. Now, during the pandemic, the use of antidepressant medications has gone up significantly. And the pandemic is increasing everybody's stress and worry disconnection, increasing isolation, and all of that is going to trigger your vulnerability. And so I, before you go to the doctor, one of my friends goes, I'm calling the doctor tomorrow. I need something for my mood. Um, and you, you know, step number one, you need to turn off the news. Um, I, it, it's like after 10 minutes, I sort of get it. I actually get my, most of my news digitally. And, and I don't really want to see people fighting with each other or yelling at each other. That doesn't calm my brain. So that's a bonus one from the 11 I'm going to talk about, but if you feed your mind negativity, you are going to feel negative. Of course, I want you to be informed. Of course, I want you to know, okay, here's phase one, and here's phase two, and here's phase three. And yes, I want you to be informed for like half an hour a day. And then I want you to go on and do something special with this time, because if you're glued to the fighting, to the blaming, to the nonsense, you're just gonna feel terrible, which is gonna damage your immune system and make it more likely that this virus or another virus is gonna jump on you and hurt you. So one of the big lessons from our brain imaging work at Amen Clinics, so depression is the number one reason people call Amen Clinics. In my database today, I have about 40,000 brains that have met the diagnostic criteria for depression. And how most people, how most psychiatrists 
diagnose depression is they use something called the DSM criteria, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And if you meet five of these eight criteria, you get a diagnosis of depression. If you're sad or blue and it lasts for more than a few weeks, if you have low energy, if you have irritability, if you have suicidal ideation, if you don't get pleasure um, in the things you usually get pleasure from, um, if you're waking up early or you can't sleep, if you have appetite changes, focus, memory. If you have five of eight of those, most psychiatrists or family doctors or internists or gynecologists or your PA or nurse practitioner, they're gonna give you a diagnosis of depression. And before you leave their office, odds are they're gonna give you a script, a prescription. And they usually start with serotonin drugs, SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And they often don't tell you the side effects, but if you look at all of them, they all have black box warnings saying these could hurt you. And let me just say clearly, I am not opposed to antidepressants. What I'm opposed to is the diagnosis of depression with no biological information on the organ that causes depression, which by and large is your brain. And one of the first thing I, I learned from our brain imaging work is depression is a symptom cluster that has many different causes. Depression is like chest pain. Now, nobody gets a diagnosis of chest pain. Why? Because if you have chest pain, it's a symptom. It doesn't tell you what's causing it. There's a hundred different causes and it doesn't tell you what to do for it. So if you have chest pain, it could be from a blocked artery. It could be from a heart arrhythmia. It could be from a heart infection. It could be from pneumonia. It could be because you had a pulled muscle because you lifted things that were too heavy or um, you played ping pong when you hadn't played it in a long while. I played an hour and a half today with my niece and my wife played with me. I was so excited. Um, chest pain can come from grief. When I went through grief about a period of 15 years ago, I went to the cardiologist because I had crushing chest pain and my heart was fine. It was grief. Um, Depression is exactly the same thing. Depression, did you know depression can come from low thyroid? It can come from low testosterone, which is at epidemic uh, proportions in this country. Um, it can come from head trauma. It can come from pancreatic cancer. If you're a guy, and you've never been depressed and you're 52 and all of a sudden you experience this crushing depression, someone should do a CT scan of your belly and look at your pancreas. Um, there's just so many causes. And the end of mental illness, my new book, I talk about, well, there's seven different types of anxiety and depression. Know your type. And then what, what I find is the serotonin drugs work for about 20% of the patients. And in big, large-scale studies, they've been shown to work no better than placebo. Now, I know, I've prescribed them for a long time. They do work better than placebo if you prescribe them to the right person. But how would you know unless you actually looked? And I want to give you 
some alternatives, some things that are actually good for all forms of depression. Vitamin D levels do need to be checked. So in the end of mental illness, my new book, which I'm really excited about, um, I have a chapter called Mind Medicines versus Nutraceuticals. And in it, there's a section on before you do medicine, consider doing these things. And I have sections for anxiety, depression, insomnia, ADHD, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and addictions. And we'll talk about each of them. But today I wanna to focus on depression because what I'm seeing is the call stamen clinics have gone way up for depression and suicide. The calls to suicide hotlines have gone up well over a thousand percent. And the longer people stay home, I mean, I think it's part of why you're seeing the protesting because people are sad and they're mad. And it's hard. And I want everybody to stay safe, to be safe. Um, which is why I've been spending all this time with you. So strategy number one, what to do before medication is you go after each of the 11 Bright Minds risk factors. And I talked about them yesterday, just to summarize, if you wanna keep your brain healthy or rescue it if it's headed to the dark place, you have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors that steal your mind. And we know what they are. The mnemonic is bright mind, so B is for blood flow. Low blood flow is classically associated with depression, especially to the left front side of your brain if you're right-handed. And low activity here has been associated in imaging studies with depression. Now, it's way more complicated than that, but example, for example, people who do TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, typically for depression, they're stimulating the left front side of the brain with powerful magnets. And TMS can be very effective. I've been a fan of it for a very long time. You wanna do whatever you can to increase blood flow. An exercise is the simplest thing to increase blood flow to your brain. We're gonna talk a little bit more about exercise. The R is retirement and aging. When you stop learning, your brain starts dying. So new learning during this pandemic, you should be taking courses. Or if you wanted to learn to garden, or for me, I've been learning to cook. I am masterful with salmon and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, it's good for me, it loves me, and I love it back. The eye is inflammation. When you have inflammation in your body, you're just much more likely to be depressed. So how do you know if you have inflammation? If you have any form of gum disease, if you're eating sugar or foods that quickly turn to sugar, bread, pasta, potatoes, rice, you're more likely to be inflamed. If you have a processed food diet, you're more likely to be inflamed. And one of the strategies, there is a linear correlation between the number of fruits and vegetables you eat a day and your level of happiness. So if you wanna be happy, get colorful fruits and vegetables in your diet up to eight servings a day. Another cause of inflammation is low levels of omega-3 fatty acids. I take omega-3 power every day because it raises my omega-3 level. You should at least, at a minimum, have grilled or baked fish once a week. At a minimum, probably twice a week to support your... Um, Omega-3 levels, low omega-3s, higher inflammation, low omega-3s, 
high incidence of depression. There's actually a study from New Zealand that found head to head against Prozac. Prozac versus fish oil. Fish oil was actually more effective. And when they combined them, it was even more effective still. The G is genetics. If you have depression in your family, it doesn't mean you're gonna get it. It means you're at higher risk for it and you should do the prevention strategies we're gonna talk about all the time so it doesn't jump on you. Um, I have heart disease and obesity in my family, but when my grandfather, who I loved, um, who I was named after, who was my best friend when I was growing up, when he had a heart attack, he got depressed. So that means, you know, if I have heart problems, I'm more likely to get depressed. And he's the first person I ever knew who was taking an antidepressant because he couldn't stop crying and he couldn't sleep. I mean, it was heartbreaking. Um, just shows you any form of heart problems also can have brain problems. Um, the H is head trauma, a major cause of depression, probably the most common cause. People go, oh, well, you have it in your family. And well, maybe that's true, but my experience at Amon Clinics, mild traumatic brain injury sets people up for depression. Your brain is soft, your skull is hard, your skull has sharp bony ridges, damage the brain, you damage the mind. Protect your head. Um, I, I'm not that sad that at the moment kids are not in spring training for football. I'm just not. Um, I'm not that sad kids aren't hitting soccer balls with their head. I, I'm not. Um, why would you ever put a developing brain in a position to experience trauma? That is just not smart when you understand the neuroscience. Um, the T in Bright Minds is toxins and you can be depressed if you have mold in your house. You can be depressed if you work at a plant and you're being exposed to environmental toxins. You can be depressed if you're a firefighter, and I've treated many firefighters, and they're often exposed to carbon monoxide, not to mention the emotional trauma. Um, detoxifying your organs. In fact, one of the strategies is one of the 11 strategies are saunas. Infrared saunas have actually been found to be a treatment for depression. Well, how crazy is that? One of my, um, one of the young ones that's living with me, my daughter and I have two nieces living with me, she was like, okay, this is getting to me. I'm feeling sad and you know, I gave her all these strategies that I'm giving you. And one of them was, I want you to go into the sauna. And she's been doing it three or four times a week and she's doing a whole bunch better. So um, detoxifying and people like, you get all excited, oh, I'm gonna go on a two week detox. I'm not a fan. I'm a fan of you detoxing all the time. Why would you ever put something toxic in your body? if you were smart, think about that. So, I mean, most of you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke pot, I don't smoke. Um, I work really hard not to eat terrible food because I think I should always be talk, detoxing. And then you wanna support your four organs of detoxification. Water, lots of water. Why? 70% of our bodies are water. 80% of your brain is water. Um, flushes things out through your kidneys. I have a small bladder, so that is not a problem for me. Um, 
fiber, lots of fiber. Had a big salad for lunch. Um, and I had a big cup of frozen blueberries. Costco has these great organic frozen blueberries. And I was there this week. It was sort of an interesting experience. But I love their organic frozen blueberries because they're loaded with phytonutrients and fiber. Um, clean out your gut. Liver. Support your liver. Eat brassicas. Those are things like cauliflower, kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, because they have detoxifying chemicals in them. And hold the alcohol. Alcohol is not a health food and it's not good for you. And during a pandemic, you need your wits about you more than ever before. And sweat with exercise. We walked the hills today, which is really great. Then we played table tennis. How many steps do I have? 9,500 on my way, hopefully to 15,000 today. Um, sweat with exercise or saunas. People who take saunas have a lower incidence of Alzheimer's disease, and it's been shown to treat depression. The M in Bright Minds is mind storms. It's these abnormal electrical activity in the temporal lobes. It's actually a great book that was written in 1980 that has actually was very seminal for me. And they talked about using anti-seizure medications to treat depression. It was written by um, Jack Dreyfus, who founded the famous Dreyfus Mutual Fund, who'd seen psychiatrists, had been suicidal, and went on a medication called Dilantin, it's an anti-seizure medication, and he said, in three days, he never had to see a psychiatrist again. He lost his depression, lost his anxiety. He felt much better. And to me, to treat the mind storms, try either a paleo or a ketogenic diet. Ketogenic diets, so high fat, really low carbohydrate diets, not good for everybody, but for some people who have the mind storms they just go away and they feel so much better. So if you get a storm of anxiety, a storm of sadness that just washes over you or anger and irritability, a ketogenic diet is something to consider. Um, the second I in Bright Minds is immunity and infections. And with COVID, I mean, everybody's thinking about immunity. Um, you want to know and measure your vitamin D level. Low levels are associated with depression. Um, you want to increase your vitamin C intake, your zinc intake. And I'm just a huge fan of garlic, mushrooms, and onions, both uh, all three of them have been found to strengthen your immunity. And then you really want to work on gut health. I don't have time tonight to talk about leaky gut. Um, I should probably do that or do that with Tana because it's just so important. Uh, healthy gut, healthy immune system, more able to detoxify and fight off infections. The Sec, the N in Bright Minds is neurohormone um, deficiencies, either low or high abnormalities, low testosterone, depression, low thyroid, classic for depression, low estrogen and progesterone for women can go with depression. Um, so you should measure your hormones every year and then work to optimize them. Now, you may have to work with a functional medicine doctor because classically trained doctors like, oh, this is normal, even it's the low end of normal. And I don't know, I've just never wanted to be at the bottom of any of my classes. So there's a difference between normal and optimal. Um, so it's an interesting question. What's the best way to lose weight healthy and fast? 
is you have to make it a life change. How are you going to eat for the rest of your life? So I'm not a fan of losing 30 pounds in three weeks because it, it just won't last. But the D in Bright Minds is diabetes. And as your weight goes up, you're more likely to be depressed because the fat on your belly messes with a bunch of other the risk factors. The fat on your belly increases inflammation. It lowers blood flow to the brain. It takes healthy testosterone and turns it into unhealthy cancer-promoting forms of estrogen, and it stores toxins. So if you're significantly overweight, it means you have five of the risk factors that um, put you at risk for cognitive problems, but also brain problems like depression. So I'm a fan of knowing how many calories you eat, and I don't want you to go too low because you'll slow your metabolism down. But for a lot of men, 1,600 calories a day, you'll lose a pound a week if you do the other things I tell you. But you need to know how many calories you're eating. And then the quality matters as much or more. And so think of a plate, 70% plant-based foods, 30% high quality protein, and mix in healthy fat. So I think that is a spectacular brain enhancing diet. And, and, and I've had so many patients over the years lose 100 pounds, 200 pounds, one guy lost 400 pounds. Um, there's a chapter in the end of mental illness called Food Made Insanely Simple. Um, and then the S in Bright Minds is for sleep. If you're not sleeping, you're much more likely to get depressed. So that's just step number one, get your bright minds risk factors under control. Step number two, check for and correct low thyroid, a very common cause of depression. And if you're depressed, I'd also get your thyroid antibodies tested. A lot of places they'll just measure your TSH and if it's you know under five, they think you're fine. Um, our docs at the clinic think if it's under 2.5, that your thyroid is sluggish and that could contribute to depression. Um, three, work with a nutritionally informed physician to optimize your folate levels. BrainMD actually makes methylfolate, um, vitamin B12, vitamin D, homocysteine, and other nutrient levels. So you have to test. You can't change what you don't measure. It's one of the reasons we scan at Amen Clinics because we're not that good at guessing. And that's why lab work is so important. Also, number four is check your omega-3 index and get it above 8%. And typically that takes about 1,400 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids, EPA, and DHA and make EPA significantly higher than DHA. EPA fish oil has been found to be effective as a treatment for depression in some studies. DHA doesn't work. DHA is better for anxiety and memory, but EPA seems to help with depression and ADHD. Five, eliminate processed foods as well as artificial dyes, preservatives, and sweeteners. If you're suffering, from depression and you go, oh, I can't afford to eat well, how much is your depression costing you? And a study from the Harvard School of Public Health said eating really well a day will cost you an extra $1.50 a day. So it's like a third of the cost of one therapy session. So um, a month. Eating right is your number one strategy. Um, six is try an elimination diet for three weeks. I actually have the directions for elimination diet in here, but you're basically getting rid of any crap for three weeks. Eliminate gluten, dairy, corn, soy, artificial dyes and sweeteners, and just do it for a month and see how you feel. Our nutritionists 
have more success stories than almost anyone else. I mean, food heals or food steals your mind. Seven. Um, colorful vegetables. I talked about that, a linear correlation between the number of fruits and vegetables you eat a day and your level of happiness. Eight, eliminate the ants, the automatic negative thoughts. Talked about it a lot. Um, whenever you have a thought, your brain releases chemicals. Whenever you have any thought, your brain releases chemicals. That's you know, you have a thought, there's a chemical transmission, you become aware of what you're thinking. Thoughts actually have mass, they have weight, and they change your brain. Whenever you have an angry thought, a hopeless thought, a helpless thought, a worthless thought, your brain releases chemicals that make you feel bad. But the opposite is also true. Whenever you have a hopeful thought, a helpful thought, a loving thought, a happy thought, your brain releases chemicals that make you feel good. Your mind reacts to every thought you have. Your brain reacts to every thought you have. If you're focused on what you love about your life, you're going to love your life. If you focus on what you hate about your life, you are going to hate your life. And during a pandemic, you know, you should be writing, what are all the great things about the pandemic? You know, whether it's extra time or learning new things or spending more time bonding with your family or just rethinking your life. Um, whatever it is, you wanna focus on what you love a lot more than what you hate if you want to love your life. Nine is exercise. It is just so important. Um, head to head against Zoloft, a really good antidepressant. Exercise was found to be equally effective at 12 weeks. At 10 months, exercise was way more effective. And think about it. At the end of 12 weeks with Zoloft, significant number of people were not depressed, but likely they had sexual dysfunction, a very common side effect of Zoloft, and they're gonna need to take that for a long time. And the internet is just ripe with, you know, I have the same experience when people try to go off antidepressants, especially serotonin antidepressants, they get these brain zaps, they get the flu, they hate how they feel. There is no withdrawal from exercise. And many athletes actually use exercise as an antidepressant. And if they get hurt, they can actually be more vulnerable to being depressed. Why? Why does exercise work? Um, so I can tell you, sugar is also an antidepressant. But the problem is short-term fix, long-term big problems. Um, you know, increases inflammation and obesity. So, don't, don't do sugar. But what sugar does is it causes an insulin response. So your pancreas sees sugar in your bloodstream, produces insulin, and insulin drives tryptophan into your brain. That's why people get so excited about cupcakes um, or donuts. Exercise causes tryptophan, the amino acid building block for serotonin, exercise causes a response that pushes tryptophan into your brain and it makes you happy. So you can choose sugar, long-term problem, or if you're smart, walk like you're late. 45 minutes, four to five times a week, that's what they did in the study. As effective as Zoloft at 12 weeks, more effective at 10 months. You should put it in your routine every day. 
walk like your light. Now, I'm also a fan of weight training. The stronger you are as you age, the less likely um, you are um, to get dementia. But strength increases testosterone. Testosterone also improves your mood, your memory, your motivation, and your strength. So um, walk like you're late or run, weight training, and then do a coordination exercise like table tennis. That's why I do table tennis, because it works your cerebellum in the back bottom part of your brain, which then activates the rest of your brain. And then we talked about saunas. So that's number 10. 11 supplements. Curcumin. Um, not the turmeric root, but one that's readily absorbed like Long Vita. Um, curcumins have been found to decrease inflammation and be a treatment for depression. Magnesium has been shown in studies to help, as has zinc. And I'm a big fan of SAMe, S adenosyl methionine, uh, has been shown in randomized placebo controlled trials to help with depression. And I'm particularly fond of saffron. There are 20 randomized controlled trials showing saffron is better than placebo and equal to Prozac, Zoloft, Effexor, Imipramine for depression. And saffron has been shown to also help with PMS and with memory, with eye health, there's a new study that actually helped lower your waist size. So I like saffron. I take saffron. Okay, lots of stuff for you to think about. If you're really struggling and you need someone to talk to, call us at Amen Clinics. We are here for you. During the pandemic, all eight of the clinics are open. We have clinics uh, in Manhattan, in um, the DC area in Reston, Virginia by Dulles Airport in Atlanta, in Chicago, actually not in Chicago, but on the North Shore, up in Bannockburn by Highland Park, Bellevue, Washington, uh, Walnut Creek outside of San Francisco, uh, Encino just north of Los Angeles, and in Costa Mesa. We are here for you. All of our doctors are doing um, virtual appointments, and we love what we do. If you really want a different way um, to approach uh, your mind, um, not really thinking of depression as one thing that requires a serotonin antidepressant, um, we would love to talk to you. Have a great Sunday. Oh, the reason I'm on early tonight, it's date night. We have decided with our three children that Tan and I, in order to stay sane, that we are going to take two nights a week just for ours. So any suggestions? We are open to it. Uh, date night in a pandemic. There's a new season of Bosch, so that may be um, tonight. See you soon.